You're listening to Upcycling with Deb. I'm your host, Deb Colometta. You can reach me on Instagram and Facebook at Deb Colometta. You can also go to my website, thedebsite.com. Recently, I did an episode on how to do tiny house entertaining. If you define your house as smaller than what you'd like, or um, you feel like you're a little crowded in your space, I want you to feel like you can host friends, you can entertain if you choose to do that. Now, we I'm an introvert for the most part, but we do love spending time with our loved ones and our friends. So I love opening up our home to our friends to spend time with them. I want to feel like I'm very confident in my space. That's one of the reasons why we work so hard to keep it decluttered because I want to be able to welcome people into my home without constantly looking around thinking, oh, are they noticing all the extras that are in this room that shouldn't be? I want to be able to focus on the guest. I encourage you to check out that episode that is related to tiny house entertaining and some of my best tips. But during that episode, I talked a little bit about the food and how to entertain in a smaller space. I think that the charcuterie board deserves its own episode. I took a class about a year and a half ago with Cheese on Wheels, which is a local charcuterie board delivery company. They started from the pandemic, which I love, and it's a female-owned and operated company local business, and I absolutely love supporting them. I took a class with them to learn how to make my own charcuterie boards. This, if you know me, you know this was a great gift because I was able to take a class, which I love doing, and it's a gift that I got a product at the end of it. I got to make my own charcuterie board, and also it was a gift that doesn't take up space in my home because it's an experience over a thing that I have to then find a place for. And I have really used these charcuterie board skills so many times. And you really just get better at making charcuterie boards by actually making charcuterie boards. I have also talked with my parents about, oh, you know, I'm going to do a full charcuterie board or charcuterie table during this event. And my parents started saying, first of all, that could be the meal if you have a full of assortment of hot and cold, sweet and spicy Um, different foods that people can kind of pick at on the table. It not only looks beautiful, but it's functional. You can eat the display. Um, And my father reminded me that as Italians, really, we invented the charcuterie board, but we call it antipasto. (laughs) So that's like the, the OG of appetizers is the antipasto. If you're trying to lighten it up and you don't necessarily want to have the heavy cheeses and the high fat content, you could think about making a really healthy antipasto. It can look beautiful. It's easy to make. Even if you just make a few of them, you learn what works, what doesn't necessarily work, what people go for. And it's an easy way to put a beautiful thing on the table that people can eat and enjoy and talk about as well. One tip I learned about doing a charcuterie board is to actually not use a board. You can go on Amazon or find at the Dollar Tree rolls of brown paper. And if you roll that out on your table, then you don't have to worry about cleaning up at the end of it. It's clean to begin with because it's not like a a platter that's been sitting in storage. So you don't have to clean it to before you use it. And also it's better for a bigger space. I don't have a really a lot of room to store a large charcuterie tray. Um, I do have a few, <laughs> but I don't have like a jumbo charcuterie tray, but I can turn my table in the kitchen into a jumbo charcuterie tray by covering it with brown paper. And I can even write on the brown paper what each item is so that I can label it. If I label it ahead, maybe the kids can help put things where my vision is, where I want to see the different items. And people know for allergy reasons what's in each thing. Oh, this is an almond. This has this type of ingredient. So they can see the labels ahead of time. So that's one thing you can do if you're trying a charcuterie board. Take a class use the brown paper, use the space you already have, make it easy for yourself. And you might find 
that the charcuterie board is so fun to make. It's fun for you, fun for the kids that you can incorporate that into your weekly meals. I have turned some things, some leftovers into a charcuterie charcuterie board on my kitchen table. You can do um, a breakfast board, throw some berries, make some pancakes, make some waffles, bagels. Those are things I might already even have in the freezer or the refrigerator. If I can kind of arrange it in a centralized place, we eat it family style, we gather around the table, why not make a breakfast board at dinner? The kids love that and it's easy cleanup. I would recommend that you try making an empty pasta with maybe healthier items that you want to focus on if you're trying to be more healthful in your eating. Or you can just do a traditional charcuterie board, but incorporate that into your weekly menu and your kids will start to learn how to make them. You'll feel more confident in making one for guests when you do entertain. And it's going to be a great experience for the family and a positive activity that you can do away from screen time, especially important when you have kids in the house, especially important too, when you have a smaller house. Thanks for listening to this episode of Upcycling with Deb. I'm your host, Deb Colometta. Visit me on my website, thedebsite.com and get your free downloadable guide.